of how much a single charge creates a field around it, disturbs the space around it. So a measure of how much a single charge disturbs or distorts, you can say, or distorts the space around it so that when you place another charge in that space, that other charge feels a force. So the electric field is defined as the force between two charges define, uh, divided by the charge of one of those charges. So its units are newtons per coulomb. It also has a, another unit called, called volt per meter, but we'll introduce that later. Its unit is newton per coulomb. So this is its definition. So in other words, if you have a charge here Q, and then you have another charge, little q, let's say. This one exerts a force on that. And the force is equal to k q little q over r squared. Now, if I want to find the electric field created at that spot by that charge, big Q, I divide the force between them by the little q, and what happens? The little q drops out, right? And so you get k big Q over r squared. So the electric field is k big Q over r squared. So even if this thing is not there, the little q, this thing creates an electric field at that location, which is in that direction. You see? So it tells you it's a measure of how much this thing distorts the space around it, okay? The electric field created by a point charge is like this. At all points in space, it's going to create an electric field like this. You see, in other words, what I did is if you're equidistant from the center of that point charge, the electric field strength is going to be the same at all points that are equidistant from that point charge. If you go twice the distance away, the electric field strength is going to have to do what? Going to decrease by a factor of what? Uh, by a factor of 4. K is, uh, E is KQ over R squared, right? So twice the distance, the electric field should go down by 4. So if I were to draw the electric field lines, it's going to be 4 times smaller. And then if I go 3 times the distance, then it's going to be 9 times smaller. Barely visible, right? And then so on. If you go four times bigger, 16 times smaller, OK? But when we draw electric field distribution of a, a charge, we usually dr don't draw it this way because it's a little too cumbersome. We don't draw certain distances, and then we don't draw the, if the electric field vector describing its uh, magnitude. The way we do it is a little bit quicker. We just draw a straight line through all those vectors like this. OK, 
Okay, a lot of people get confused when they see this drawing because what they think is that the electric field here it starts from here and goes all the way through it. That's not what it means. The electric field here actually is a vector, like we did over there, is a vector that starts here like that and has a certain magnitude. This one is not showing you, it's not telling you that the electric field has to start here and go all the way that way. But what it's telling you is just a little, is a general description that uh, the electric field lines created by a point charge start from it and emanate away from it radially. Okay, And as you go away from the point charge, notice the electric field lines are getting farther apart. That's an indication that they're getting weaker. Okay, So if I draw like a, like a little circle of a certain size, if I draw the circle over here, two lines are going through it. If I draw the line over here, only one line is getting, going through it, you see? So if I draw it over here, only one line is going through it again. Now, if I draw more density of lines, and I can draw that circle again, and I can say, OK, over here, one, two, three, four, five lines are going through that. So that's the most density of lines. Over here, one, two, three. Now it's beginning to decrease. Over here, only one, you see? So with this way of drawing the E-field distribution, the way that you show the magnitude of the E-field is the, is the density of lines. If they're closely packed, the population of lines, then the electric field strength there is stronger. Whereas over here, the way that you show is by actually the length of the vectors, you see? This is electric field strength is strong, weaker, and even weaker. But over here, you just show a straight line, and then when they are uh, getting farther apart, they're getting weaker. So if you see an E-field distribution that looks like this, okay, where's the E-field the weakest? Here. Over here, it's the weakest, right? Over here, it's the strongest. Right? And over here is the sort of in the middle. Over here, it's kind of weak too, but not as weak as this. So probably be, I would say strongest, second strongest, third, and fourth. So number one, two, three, four in strength. So basically, you just go down the strength uh, in terms of how many lines are per unit uh, area, you see? <coughs> So then the next thing we do is we say, well, what if you have more than one point charge? Do they also create the E-field? The answer is yes. Each one disturbs the space around it. And so the, the, the combination of the, uh, the two shows you how the space is disturbed together. The gravitational analogy of this is what's called the gravitational field. The gravitational field is the force between two charges divided by the mass of one of the charges. And the mass and mass cancel. So the gravitational field is gm over r squared times r hat. What's the units of the gravitational field? It'll be Newtons divided by kilogram, just like the units of electric field is Newtons divided by coulombs. But the gravitational field has another unit, and it's just what? Anyone?